Hi, everyone. Uh, nice to be here. Uh, very bright up here. Uh, hey, I'm going to talk to you about Dino and OpenTelemetry. Um, raise your hand if you know what Dino is. Great. Uh, raise your hand if you have used Dino. Good. Ah, awesome. Um, yeah, for those of you who don't know, uh, Dino is a JavaScript and TypeScript runtime, and it has TypeScript kind of deeply baked into it. And it can more than just execute TypeScript, it can do type checking. And it is really thoughtful about web standards and is, of course, a server-side runtime, but uh, tries to narrow the gap between uh, browsers and server JavaScript. It is uh, an out-of-the-box toolchain. Uh, everything you need comes in a single file. And uh, yeah, has, has all sorts of, of tooling for uh, manipulating, using, understanding JavaScript and TypeScript. It is secure by default, famously secure by default, I should say. Um, like browser JavaScript, uh, you don't get access to the file system or the network by default. And uh, it is uh, backwards compatible with Node since, since Dino 2.0. Debugging production applications is hard. Who here has struggled with high traffic servers and understanding what is going on there? Some of you, yes. It can be very painful. Um, there is technological solutions these days to this that can make this much, much better. But we often come back to the, the humble console log to solve many problems. Uh, I have used step debuggers. Uh, I've used breakpoints in many situations. But uh, I think uh, I would be lying if I don't uh, say that I debug most problems with, with console logs. Um, but in, in production servers, we, we can do better. Um, and we can do better without too much trouble. So uh, to demonstrate this, let's pretend we have a service with a bug. And let's develop this uh, on the fly here. Um, this will be a little bit contrived, but bear with me. So let's imagine that we have a function called create user. And it's going to create a new user ID. And it's going to write it to the database. But we'll just, we'll just uh, wait a little bit, sleep, sleep a few milliseconds. Uh, and then we're going to insert a little bug into this, and we'll try to, try to understand where that bug is. So let me open up my editor here and uh, try not to make too many mistakes. So um, yeah, let's, let's write this function. So we'll, we'll do async function, create user. And this thing's going to return a string. And uh, I'm going to just grab a UUID from uh, uh, Web Crypto, so crypto.random UUID. And I'm already seeing a problem here. I've got to add my uh, promise around my string. Um, and let's log that out. So we'll say console log uh, user ID is ID. And let's. Uh, Let's write to the database here. So uh, what I'm going to use is, is a little utility called delay that delays a, a certain number of milliseconds. And you can grab this thing from, from JSR delay. And that's, at, that's in the standard library uh, async. I won't talk about JSR today, but do check it out, JSR.io. Um, so after we've written this to the database, let's just pretend that we have a little bug here. And uh, the bug that I'm going to uh, introduce here is that if the first letter of this UUID is A, then we're going to throw some exception. Throw new error. Uh, no, not that. Come on, Copilot. Uh, error. Bug. Um, so this is the bug that we want to debug, and we're going to return some. some uh, we're going to return that that ID here. Uh, let me just check here. We got a little squiggly. This is the Dino LSP in in action here. Dino lint happening, but that's that's fine. 
create user is, is, uh, is not used yet. OK, so let's, let's wrap this up in a little API server. For this, I like to use Hono these days. And I'll just import that from NPM. And in Dino, you can just import uh, npm colon hono to, to grab that. And um, let's see. Let's, uh, let's instantiate this thing. So const, do people know hono? Hono is like express, but, but better in basically every way. Um, so yeah, when, when, you, when you get uh, slash, we are going to We're going to uh, call our create user function. So let's uh, create user. And let's assign this to an ID. And let's uh, return C a little JSON object here. And we'll tab our, our way to success here. And I'm getting a little LSP error here from the Dino LSP, saying that I forgot to add an async here. And yes, everything is type checking beautifully now. Um, the last thing I need to do is, is just dino serve this app.fetch. And we should be able to run our program. So I'm going to run this with allow all, with, sorry, with allow net, uh, because uh, it is a creating a server, and I need to give it permission to do that. So I'll just run that. Uh, and if I open another terminal here, we should be able to curl, localhost, 8,000. And we indeed get our, our user, our new user. Um, if I curl this a couple of times, we should hit our bug. I guess on average, this will take about 16 times. And hopefully, I, if we're unlucky, we're going to be here all day. Oh, oh, boy. Oh, OK. Yay. <laughs> um, OK, so yeah, we've got this exception here. And let's just imagine that you're debugging this, and you would see you know, this, this console log before it with, with a little A here at the start, right? Hopefully, this is visible enough for you all to see. Um, but of course, this is not what it's going to look like in a real high traffic situation. It's going to look rather like something like this. Let's WRK it. And you're going to get all sorts of logs happening all the time. And uh, you're going to see random exceptions in your logs, something like this. And you might uh, naively uh, look at the code and be like, hmm. What happened just before that? User ID, this one starts with six. That must not be the bug, right? Let's, let's assume that this is like a very complicated bug to understand, right? That you can't just look at the code and, and uh, understand it. Um, because, uh, because this is an asynchronous function and because we're, we're handling many, many requests at once, uh, the logs are kind of interleaved with each other, right? Um, and yeah, you, you, can't, you can't necessarily uh, uh, associate log lines with the requests that, that are generating them or, or the exceptions that happen during that request. So how do you solve this problem? Well, open telemetry and Dino to the rescue here. What we can do is add this unstable hotel flag. Uh, and if we add uh, also an environment variable, service name is create user. So add an environment variable. And you have to add this unstable OTEL flag right now because uh, we have not stabilized this support in Dino yet. But if we run our server again and we generate some load on it, and uh, we can then go into, uh, into Grafana, where we can start looking, looking at our results. So, uh, let me set service name to, to uh, uh, create user. And let's look at our logs inside of Grafana. Looks much the same as we saw in the terminal. Uh, the nice thing here, though, is that with this exception, we actually have a trace ID. 
So what Dino is doing is auto-instrumenting our, our program and assigning trace IDs to, uh, to each re request, and those trace IDs are being propagated through and uh, attached to each of the log lines. These user ID log lines also have trace IDs. So let's, let's go start debugging our, our program here. You see your exception and you see a, a trace ID. Now we can filter the logs by that trace ID and see that there are actually only two, you know, there's the, the exception and one other log line associated with this request, and that it does indeed start with an A, right? So, so we've, we've been able to associate these, these two things, even though they occurred at very different time frames. So logs are, traces, traces are kind of dressed up logs, right? Uh, you, 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 uh, they're fancy logs. Logs are just a point in time. They are human readable. They're very easy to employ. Traces are, have causality to them. They help you debug things. They have timing associated with them. Let's look at uh, this a little bit more carefully. If we click this trace button, we can uh, see kind of the timeline here. Now, this is a very simple one, uh, but uh, we, we kind of, let me see if I can expand this a little bit. Um, but we, we can see that this create user took uh, 103 milliseconds, and there are various span attributes associated with this. We can see that the it got a 500 response, and that it was a git method, and this is the URL that it hit. So yeah, traces are fancy logs that help. You might think this is magic. This is not magic. This is, we were able to associate these, these logs with requests automatically without any code changes, and this is using something called async context propagation. There's been some technology changes in recent months that are allowing for this now. So this in late 2024, uh, late last year, uh, V8 stabilized this continuation preserved in better data uh, API, that, a C++ API, that allows for fast traces in JavaScript. And this was spawned by the async context proposal and the earlier async hooks work in Node, async context being a TC39 proposal that is at stage two right now and looks like it will be moving to stage three here at some point and into browsers, uh, yeah, maybe, maybe next year or, or so. <clears throat> so you have logs, you have traces. There's also metrics, and if we follow this little uh, cartoon metaphor, metrics are you know, maybe when you, when you saw up your logs and stack them and count them, uh, gives you uh, aggregated information about uh, what's happening in your application. I won't look at that right now. Um, suffice it to say that in Dino 2.2, telemetry is built in, and you can run this, you can run existing applications in Dino and get this telemetry automatically. That, because Dino also can run Node applications, this means, in particular, that you can take in an existing Node application, run it in Dino, and suddenly see a bunch of information that you couldn't see before. So out of the box, Dino is auto-instrumenting, is log correlating, uh, attaching these, console log, these, these trace IDs with, with console logs. It does one trace per HTTP request, uh, it has spans for incoming and outgoing HTTP requests. It has request count metrics. It has response latency. And it has a uh, trace parent header uh, on outbound requests for propagating between services. And we're going to keep adding to this. So when you run in Dino, you will get all sorts of instrumentation for free. Of course, you can add your own spans and metrics using the Open Telemetry API on NPM, and these two things play well together. 
so I, I would encourage you to try this out. There's a QR code here, here to, the, to the documentation. And yeah, ba basically just, just run your app in Dino, add a couple of flags, and uh, export your hotel data to wherever you want, to Grafana or Datadog or whatever system you're using. And you should be able to see inf interesting information about your JavaScript server. So telemetry is also coming to Dino Deploy. Dino Deploy, raise your hand if you know Dino Deploy. Great, uh, fewer people. Uh, Dino Deploy is uh, the easiest server, those of you who raised your hand, is it the easiest serverless system? <laughs> it, is, it is delightful to use. Uh, we are about to release a few more features in Dino Deploy, one of them being uh, telemetry support. And unfortunately, not, not quite ready for, for uh, open access right now, but I would encourage you to, if you're interested, to follow this QR code and opt into early access features. And we'll be rolling this out in, in the coming weeks to, to Dino Deploy. So once you start running your application there, you uh, can start seeing all sorts of stuff. And let me give a brief demo of that. So I'm going to create a new application. And I, by the way, I've got this, uh, this code deployed to uh, my .js demo. Here's, here's my main TS file. Um, I'm going to tr deploy this application here. Should take just a second, hopefully. OK, so we've, we've deployed our little application. And we are indeed getting our, uh, our user IDs. And it, you know, if I reload enough, we will hit an exception eventually. You can see the logs in Dino Deploy, of course. Uh, but now you can also see traces and dig into them. This is a, this is a pretty simple one, but you, you can imagine that, that you can have a, a, a pretty interesting waterfall here and, and see all sorts of spans and attributes of uh, various things going on. I'll just click, click around here a little bit. Yeah, so this is coming to Dino Deploy. It, uh, I'm, I'm pretty excited about that. One more thing here. Uh, Complete digression from all of this. So yes, try try open telemetry in Dino. Try try this in Dino deploy. Uh, email me if you hit some problems or uh, find it not delightful. I I think you will. Okay, digression. Uh, do you know who owns the trademark for JavaScript? Do you know that JavaScript is trademarked? Oracle owns the, the trademark for JavaScript. This is very surprising, because Oracle has essentially nothing to do with JavaScript. We are uh, frustrated with this situation. And we have written this open letter here at javascript.tm, where you can lend your support by signing it. Uh, I'm, I and the Dino company are in the process of officially petitioning, petitioning the US Patent Office to cancel the JavaScript trademark. This is being lawyered out at, as, as we speak. It's a, it's a long, long and arduous process, but the more public support we have, the better for this. And I think, yeah, it's safe to say, at least within these walls, that, yeah, it, it makes no sense that Oracle owns the, the trademark. There should be able to be a JavaScript conference Currently, there cannot be a JavaScript conference. Oracle will cease and desist you. But that's, that's really uh, unfair and not what trademarks are for. So please lend your support by, by signing this open letter. And thank you.